Good morning, good morning. We praise God for another Sunday morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. If you don't have freedom on this morning, we pray that by the time the message is over, the day's service is ended, you have freedom. Amen. Let's hear freedom right now. Let's get into the worship of this song on today. Put your hands together.
Praise God unto you this morning. Amen. I am free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. I praise God for freedom on today. This song, if you heard it, heard the words through Jesus Christ, I shout, I give God the glory, I give him the honor because I am free. Praise God for you on today. We serve an awesome God. We're giving God all the glory and the praise for what he's done for us on today. There is a word from the Lord on today in relation and relative to the song that was sang. As you all know, that is not my song. I do not own that music. That is Eddie James singing that song. So we praise God for the music that has been given to us on today. In your Bibles, if you will, in your Bibles, if you will, the text is coming from Proverbs 14 and 34. Proverbs 14 and 34. That's in your Bibles. Proverbs, the 14th chapter and the 34th verse. Proverbs 14, 34. Lord, we thank you. We're not going to bless your word because your word is already blessed. What I ask, God, is that you would bless us, bless me as I stand before your people to give your word that is already blessed. Now bless me to be able to give what you say that they may also be blessed in the name of Jesus. We bind any and everything that come against your word, that try to dilute it, try to make it false, try to make it counterfeit, that your word is real, your word is right, and your word is life unto us. By it, God, we move, we live, and we have our being. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, let's read the word of the Lord on this morning coming from the, the text. is coming from Proverbs, the 14th chapter and the 31st verse. It reads, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Uh, in this simple verse, we uh, see and establish there's a rule, there's a standard, and it's composed of two alternatives, two alternatives. It said righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And in today's society, man, businesses, jobs, uh, whatever you may be in uh, that has to do with the secular world, a uh, man love writing diagrams and they, they love writing the cause and effect diagrams. And uh, I have one for you on today. There is no middle ground. There are two causes and each have an effect on today. One cause is righteousness. The other cause is sin. Righteousness, the effect is it exalts a nation. The effect of sin is it brings down, it destroys, it, it depletes, it takes away from, it does not add. Men have yet to learn that what is wrong in an individual is wrong in society. And as we see in our world on today, we see it in each of our communities uh, where we live, you, you know, you have those that's trying to move, as they said, to the better neighborhoods, to the better communities, uh, the better societies. But how do we move to better communities and better societies and better communities if we don't have better people? It doesn't matter. The community does not make itself. Man makes what the community is. And if something is wrong in me, something's going to be wrong in the society, in my community, or wherever I am. Uh, nations make war on another, on each other for reasons which never justify the mean in fighting or duel. When we look at our nations on today, our world on today, even our great United States and all of the other countries involved, uh, men make wars and they fight each other based on their own individual disciplines, what they feel is right, what they think is right. And because I feel a certain way, it does not make it right for me to go and take over your country or destroy your country and try to make it like me when you are not me. So whatever's wrong in a man is wrong in society. And so in order to fix that, man's heart has to be fixed and that has to come through Jesus Christ. Watch this. Yet, if it's wrong for a nation to steal a field, it must be wrong for a nation, no, excuse me, yet, if it's wrong for a man, me, a man, you, to steal a field, 
It must be wrong for a nation to steal a providence. Yeah, I said it. If it's wrong for me to steal a field, then it's wrong for a nation to steal a providence. And when we look at the warring and the fightings around the world today, starting with our great United States, we are robbing and we are stealing from other countries and other nations based on our own beliefs. And based on that, we go and do just what, if I still feel you stole a nation. And when we look at that, if any individual can cut his neighbor's throat out of revenge without being punished as a criminal, watch this, there's nothing to justify a whole community in shooting down thousands of people for no better motive. What, you, what are we saying? In other words, our nation, it says righteousness exalts a nation. When we're looking at this now, we can not talk about a nation without talking about the people because the people makes the nation. So this word on this morning is a strong word. It may not be a long word, but it's a strong word. And if we look at the justification of man and of men and women around the world, why do we have the fightings? Why do we have what we have? Why do we have the discrepancies? Why, uh, discrepancies? Why do we have the rights? Why do we have the wrongs? Why do we have not what having equality everywhere? Because it's inside of the individual and whatever's on the inside of me, I'm going to make my community or nation or society around me just like I am. So when the word speaks, we don't want to listen to what the word is saying because it's providing us with the means of how to escape where we are based on what's on the inside of man. Now, when we look at it, selfishness is sinful in one man. Well, selfishness cannot be virtuous in 30 million of people. When you look at it, if, if, if it's sinful in one man, if there's 30 million people that are sinful, then we have that same now collage of sinfulness, which will bring about a greater discrepancy in how we live, what we think, and what we do. The reign of righteousness must govern both public and in national movements. When we look at it, see, if a man is right in his heart, in his mind, if I love God, then if I'm in government, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to think the right thing. I may not be able to carry all of those thoughts out because it's more than me. But if everybody that's in the White House, that's in uh, uh, the House of Congress, in the Senate, on the left, on the right, the Democrats and the Republicans, the left wing and the right wing and those who have no wings. When we look at if all of these different societies and groups and clubs of men would have the same heart, have the same mind, would have the same thinking, we would have a better nation that would be better equality in our world. And in our world, God expects us to do the right thing towards all people. Am I my neighbors? Am I my brother's keeper? Am I my neighbor's keeper? Yes, I am. For the Bible has said, love your neighbor as yourself. But then we see how people love their neighbor as they self. If they don't like they self very well, they're not going to treat you and I very well. So the better community, the better societies, the better state, the better nation is not going to come on its own. It's going to come from people having an inward change. That's why many times when people say they're going to lead certain churches, I don't like this church, I don't like that church, I don't like that pastor, I don't like that group of people. Maybe it's not that church, that pastor, that group of people. Maybe it's you. So then you go and you move your membership, you say, to a better church. Well, now it has a, it can't stay a better church if you have come there the same way you left the other church. In other words, if we're going to have better churches and better places to go and worship, it's because the people inside of the buildings are going to change what their hearts and their mindsets are. You, you go and make one church bad and you go to another church, oh, I, I like the church. Why? You, you don't like it because you change. The people are the same as the people you left, but you simply stand aside or stand out. But if you become a part, then what you do, you begin to ruin, you begin to bring down the betterness of it because you brought corruption to it because you weren't right when you left. So when we look at the word, as we get ready to get into the word and dissect it a little bit more on this morning, that's why the Bible says that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. Let's look at it. You hear people say all the time, or they blame God for everything that's happening in society, in our communities, and to man, and to everybody else. 
But when are we going to take the responsibility on ourselves and say, hey, maybe the reason things are wrong, not that God did it, maybe I did it. Maybe I made the wrong decision. I made a bad choice of things. And so I not only made it worse for myself, but I made it worse for others that are around me. When are we going to grow up? When are we going to say it's my fault? Yeah, yeah. That's a big word today when people say it's my fault. That's not easily stated by people that think they're always right and that they are not in the wrong and they justify everything they do and everything they say. They want to make everybody around them not right and, and, and make everything around them bad because they want to always be the one looked up to. Well, and there comes a time in all of our lives, even myself as pastor, that I have to take the responsibility for something that did not go right. I just can't say why well, I am what I am and what I say is always right. Well, I try to say the things that's always right. I try to do the things that's always good. But sometimes I error just like you. I make mistakes just like you. It's not the error and the mistakes that we make. It's folks not living up to it. Folks not taking the responsibility and say, you know what? That's on me this time. That, that, that's my fault. I should have done better. I could have done better. Now watch this. Give me another chance, another opportunity to correct that that was not right. Each of us have an opportunity. Let's correct those things that are not right. We can make our society, our nations and nations and our communities where we are a whole lot better. When we look at marriages, when we look in the, in the eye of marriages, marriages fight time after time again because neither side want to take responsibility. Listen, stuff just does not go wrong by itself. Something is not right by itself. That It involves somebody. It involves some things. It involves a choice. It involves a decision. So even in marriages, you have a lot of fighting in marriages because people, again, don't want to take responsibility for their side. In other words, I can't make your side right, but I can make my side right. At least take the responsibility and say, you know what? That's my error. That's my wrong. I should have done better. I could have did this. When we do that, then we begin to change our environment. Things around us begin to change. Oh, by the way, the thought for this morning is it's time to make a decision. It's time to make a decision to choose whether or not we're going to follow the guidelines and the principles and the standards that God have given unto us for things to be better in us and around us, or we make the other decision to do what we want, and then whatever it falls, whatever the acts lay, then it is what it is. But this morning, I hope we grasp the understanding that I need to make a decision. I need to make a better decision. I need to make a righteous decision if I want the proper growth to go forward. All we can see now is God is requiring something from all of us and not just a few. Again, God is requiring something from everybody, not just a few. A few people are not going to make it right, just like we have the old adage or cornage of saying it takes, a, it takes a village to raise a child that one parent, one father, one mother cannot raise their children. One reason is because I don't see my child all the time. I don't know everything that my child does. You'll hear people say, well, my child does not do that. My child would not do that. You're not with your children all the time, and as good as you you think they are. They do not do right all the time. So it takes us as a village, someone else watching your child, looking at your child, my, me watching yours, you watching mine. Together we can build the right kind of society and relationship and community for each other to live in as we look after each other. I, I am my brother's keeper. Whether you want to admit it or not, we are our brother's keeper. So God is requiring something from all of us to make it better. So when you look at the beginning of the script, it said righteousness exalts a nation. Righteousness exalts a nation. We, we're getting to it. We're coming to that place. Listen, watch this. The phrase is not to know specific nation, but it clearly identifies all nations. It said righteousness exalts a nation, not just the, the United States, not just Europe, not just China, not just Asia, but righteousness exalts every nation. This word is not just to one group of people or not to one person. It includes all of us. And in these challenging times, we should ask ourselves these two causes as we embrace whether we want righteousness or sin. And in our choosing of righteousness or sin in our choice, then there is 
amen, in effect that comes with that a cause and an effect. And now we can't blame God for the decisions we make that are bad, that are wrong, that are not good. And we said God should have done something. God should not have allowed me to do that. Well, remember, God has given all of us a freedom, a choice. We have the ability to even choose God or not choose God. He sent his son to die for us, but again, he left us with a choice to say, you know what? I, I would rather you choose my son that I, I paid the price for. He redeemed man back. But again, you don't have to. And in that choosing or not choosing, there is an effect that comes later. I heard someone say that, you know, oh, God wouldn't send no one to hell or God would send no one. You're exactly right. God would not. God does not. You do it to yourself. Again, not taking responsibility for your own decision. You don't get to live the way that you want to live. Do what you want to do. Go where you want to go. And then in the end, tell God, well, Lord, save me. I, I know I didn't accept this person Savior. I know I didn't do this, God. I know I didn't do that. But can you look over this? Can you look over that? Can you make a pass? No. The Bible said, listen, listen, in our belief and in our thinking about God, he said the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. Whether you want to believe it or not, everybody is working towards an end. All of our ends are not going to be good or great, but you do have the right to make a decision. You have the responsibility to choose the best for yourself. You ought to tell somebody, you ought to choose the best for yourself. A standard, a rule, a cause, an effect has been laid out on this morning, and it's that righteousness exalts a nation. Watch what it said. A nation, not just a community, not just a society, not just a small group of people, but righteousness exalts a nation. If we want our nation great, if we want America great, then not only us, but the president of uh, Congress, those that are in the White House, those that are running our country, if we want a great country, if we want a great nation, it's going to take more than just the church folks loving God. It's going to take more than the preacher and members loving God. It's going to take the White House loving God, those in Congress loving God, those sitting that are governors and their mayors of states everywhere. It's going to take all of us together to do it. It cannot happen again by itself, and it's just not going to come to pass on its own that we're going to wake up one day and everything is going to be right. If it's going to be right, it's because men and women, girls and boys everywhere have made the same decision, and that is to choose God. Watch this now. When we say righteousness, we say what exactly is righteousness? Simply put, God is declaring us righteous through and by the blood of Jesus Christ that he paid on Calvary's cross. In other words, God declared us righteousness because the word again said our righteousness is as filthy rags. In other words, if I try to make myself righteous before God, if I try to do everything right, everything good, everything great, everything grand, and I try not to sin, it's yet not the righteousness that God has declared. But when God declared, watch the word, when he declared, he saved, I declare you righteous. He said, even though I know that you are not perfect, even in my imperfectness, God have made me perfect in his own eyes when he said, I have declared you righteous. How does he do that? Why does he do why has he done it? It's through and by the blood of Jesus Christ. So when Jesus came and died, then it gave God the ability to look at me differently. So when God looked at me, he doesn't look at Moses straight at my own flesh. He sees me through the blood of Jesus Christ that paid the ultimate price. For the Bible has declared in the Old Testament and New that without blood there is no remission of our sins. So the decision that I'm making on today is a life and a death decision on today. And when we look at it, when we say sin, when we are in sin, that means we have rejected the salvation that Jesus played with his own blood. In other words, sin says, I no longer want God's standards. I don't want God's principle. I don't want God's ways. For he said, your thoughts is not my thought. My ways is not your ways. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, he says, so are my ways in my thinking. But now I can possess the mind of Christ if I accept him as my savior. Someone said, well, how do I think like God? Well, if I accept his son, accept his dying and his rising again and accept him as my savior, then I can begin to think 
Let God think. I can see what God sees. How do I do that? I do that through the word of God. So that's what sin, remember again, sin takes away, sin destroys, sin tears down, sin does not build. It takes away from that you have built. So that's why it said righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach. In other words, sin is a destroyer. It'll, it'll take everything. When you look at Adam and Eve in the garden, they had everything. There was nothing that they could desire that they did not already have. They didn't have to kill animals as we do to have food. They had a whole garden of Eden and they just had one principle to live by. And that is there was one, there was one tree that's in the midst of the garden. Whatever you do, you can eat from everything. You can bite from anything. You can take whatever you want. I just have, have one choice for you not to make. There's a tree in the midst of the garden. Do not bother that tree. Don't eat off that fruit because the day you eat from the fruit from that one tree that's in the midst of the garden, you shall surely die. That is no different than the decisions that God is saying that we have on today. We have that same decision, that same choice, the same responsibility to take the blame. Now when we look at it and when, when Eve ate out the fruit, whichever one it was, she gave it to Adam and he did eat and they got out the garden. They covered themselves with sin. Listen, it was not God's fault for putting the tree in the midst of the garden. Instructions had been given. Look at someone said instructions have been given. We need to follow instructions. We need to learn how to obey. If they wanted to stay in the garden and live in that sense of tranquility, the greatest place on earth at the time. All they had to do was leave alone what God said. Don't bother. Listen, that's what we have done on today. We're blaming God for things that are wrong, that are bad, our nations and all this stuff. But let's just tell the truth. The problem is not God. The problem is us. We make wrong decisions a lot of us, most of our lives. And most of us, a lot of us is in places today that we should not be because you made a bad decision. Do you blame it on God? No, no, God didn't do that. You did. Well, well if, if God had done this, if God had allowed this or not allowed that, stop blaming God. What part of the decision is yours? Where do you stand up and become grown? Many times we'll tell folks, I'm grown. I'm three times seven. I can make my own decision. Well, that's what you've done. You made your own decisions, but then when it goes bad, when it goes sour, when it does not go your way, or it looks and appears good for a little while, and down the road, it looks like then destruction come, then you want to blame God. Start blaming God for your bad decisions. He's saying on this morning, make a decision, make a choice, and you have the ability to even make the right choice. You got the ability to do the right thing. You have the ability to do the best for yourself. But watch this now. Anytime when you deal with sin, sin always want to be self gratified. How does my body feel? Does my body like it? Does my body want to do it again? Does my body want to go there? If you're not careful, your body is going to take you to hell. Yes, that's right. Your body is going to take you to the lake of fire. So you can't allow your body to dictate to you or to have dominion over your body. You need to tell your body to line up with what I'm saying. Body, that's not good for me. I'm not going to make that choice. Body, I'm not going to go over there because that's not the best for me. When you start making your body line up with your choices, don't let your body tell you. You tell your body. And in the meantime, stop blaming God. Now, in this verse also, this is not a past or future condition, but it's a current condition right now. In other words, this word that God gave back in Proverbs over 2,000 years ago, we may say, well, that was for Israel. That was for the Gentile nations then. That's not for now. When we look at our world system and everything that we have right now, we see the very same thing. Righteousness exalts a nation. Sin is a reproach. It brings it down. So when we look at where we are, we can't even blame really the government for where we are. It's, it's more of us than it is the government. And if more of us would be saved, if more of us would get saved, if more of us would give our lives to the Lord, then we'd find out our communities are not going to be better because we need more, more police police officers and we need more FBI and C CIA and CEA. We don't need no more of them folks. We just need the individuals 
in the communities to make the right decisions and watch it. My community would be a great decision when all of us are thinking the same way and act the same way. The police doesn't have to run down the street. He may drive through the neighborhood, but he's just driving through. He don't have to arrest anyone because we have made a decision on our own to do Hallelujah, the right thing. The verse does not say our past righteousness will exalt us today or tomorrow. See, it's not talking about our past. See, many of us want to say, well, I I've done better in the past and I've done better yesterday and, and I made a good decision then. Well, you, 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 what decision are you making now? Are you making the right decision right now? Are you doing the right thing right now? I heard someone say, you are only as good as your last time. Well, that, that was yesterday. What about today? Are you making the right decision today? Have you decided to do the right thing today? Have you decided to say, I'm going to make the best choice for my life on today? And I'm not going to let someone else decide for me or dictate to me. You have a mind. You, 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 you're in your right mind. You can make a good choice for yourself. Stop letting people tell you you can't make a good choice for yourself or you're not in your right mind or something is wrong with you. I tell you something else wrong with you when you let others dictate to you what you should do with your own life and the decisions that you should be making. Remember, you're not making a temporary decision like I said in Sunday school this morning. These decisions that I'm talking about right now are eternal. It's not just for today, not just for yesterday, not just for tomorrow, but these decisions are an eternal decision that's going to decide where I'm going to spend eternity. And nor does it say that our current sin will one day in the distant future be a reproach. No, my, my sin is going to be a reproach right now. Remember what God is saying here, what well, everything God is talking about is current. It's talking about right now. It's not talking about later, not talking about tomorrow, not talking about your past or just in the future. It's right now. It's every single day. And when we look at the word and take the word for how it's saying and it's implying to us, the word is instructing us how to live and how we can have the best for our lives, not only right now, but eternally, because this is not the end of us when this body goes to the grave. It's not the end of us. It's really just the beginning. So the text is clear that the righteousness of a nation exalts right now. The righteousness, we would show the righteousness of God or what he is to us and how great God is in our life. It will exalt our nation right now. And likewise, the sin of a nation is a reproach right now. No, the sin is not going to come up later. It's not like planting a seed and you wait for it to grow and then later as it grow up, then it becomes. No, sin is current. It's right now. It's not going to happen later. It's happening right now. Sin is going to begin to destroy you right from the beginning, which is now. And when we look at this, each nation, each nation is either one or the other. You can't be both, watch this, you can't be both righteous and then sinful at the same time. No, you can't, you can't be righteous, you can be sinful at the same time. No, you cannot. The Bible says whoever you yield yourself members to and obey, that's who your master is. I hear a lot of folks talking with their mouth, but I see with their lives are living. You saying one thing with your mouth, but your life is living unto the devil. So you can't live unto the devil and say you belong to God. It does not work like that. I don't care what church you in, where you come from, what doctrine that they're preaching. They're preaching the wrong doctrine if they tell you you can live your life any kind of old way and yet help God. All you got to do is ask, ask God for repentance. Well, that's another lie because the Bible says if you willfully sin, there is no repentance. What it's saying is if you have made yourself accountable to continue to do wrong, you can't ask for repentance. Oh, that's right. What is repentance? Repentance is turning from what you said you just said. Now, if you haven't turned from, repent means to turn from and to do different. It's not 360. It's called 180. Whatever it is, it's not going back to the original point of destination. You got to change your destination. Look at someone and say, you need to change your destination, your destination. If you have not done that, then you have not repented. You have not changed your life. So we can choose our own way or we can choose God's way, but you cannot have both. Tell somebody that right now. 
You need to choose God's way or your own way, but you cannot have both. And that's what people want to do. They want to live any kind of way they want to live, do whatever they want to do, and yet say they have God. I'm saved. I'm a Christian. I love God. I go to church. I go to Bible study. None of that stuff make you saved. If you're not saved and have accepted God in your heart, whether you even go to a building or not, you can be saved. The building does not make you saved. I take my saved self to the building. So this is what we need to learn. Make a choice. Now, you remember Joshua and Joshua the 24th chapter and the 15th verse, it said, he said, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. I just said the title for the message today is you need to make a decision. He said, you need to choose this day whom you will serve, whether it's the gods which your father served that was on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whom land, whose land you now dwell in. But as for me and my house, thank you God, we will serve the Lord. So way back in that day and time, over 2,000 years ago, Joshua made the declaration to the people of God and to the world. He said, if it seemed even, I watch this, if it seemed bad for you uh, to serve the Lord, and if you think God is a bad God and you follow another good God to serve, he said, just choose up. Stop complaining. If, 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 if the God of the Amorites, which is the false God, the heathen God, man had made statues and structures and serving statues and structures and talking to a statue that cannot hear, cannot see, cannot walk, cannot talk. He said, it's okay, it's fine. You make a decision, a decision what you on who you're going to serve. But he said, as for me, in my house, we will serve the Lord. I wish I had someone today that would stand up and say, for me in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're not going to do as the heathen do. We're not going to act as the heathen act. We're not going to go where the heathen go. Why? Because I serve the Lord. And the folk that serve the Lord, they just are a different group of people. We are from a righteous royal priesthood in a chosen generation. So it makes us different. So that's why he said, make a choice, make a decision. How many of you have tried to address this situation, this twofold condition? Watch this. We cannot redefine the terms of righteousness and sin. You can't make righteousness what you want and make sin what you want. Some of us try to say, well, I, this is how I look at it. And you ask people what they think about the word. They say, well, this is how I feel about the Bible. And this is what I do. And this is how I act. The Bible didn't tell us to do that. God didn't tell us to redefine, look over it, and try to justify what we do it or not or what's right or what's wrong about it. We can't do that. If we ignore what God has given to us as his word and if we continue to modify what God has already done, we're going to find ourselves in a state of loss now and loss eternally. If you go and take and try to modify, change, alter God's word, make it fit you. Listen, God, God's word has one suit and you got to get in the suit that God gave you. You can't go and tailor made a suit for yourself and say, I'm going to put God over here. You can't put God nowhere. You can't tailor made God. You can't modify who he is or what he is or, or what he said. You're going to take God's word for face value as what it is or you're not going to take it at all. This is the problem that we face as a nation of people and as nations all over the world. What we have done, we have moved so far from God's standards that we can no longer, a lot of us can't see our way back. We have reduced morality to just political discussions and debates about rights and whether someone is doing something right or wrong in the eyes of God. It's not just a moral place, a moral uh, uh, condition. It's a spiritual condition that brings about morality. If you really want to have the greatest morality in the world, you need to have a spiritual change. You need to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. And once that encounter comes through Jesus Christ, oh, the morality of the world is good. I'll treat my neighbor as myself. I love my neighbor as myself. I won't rob. I won't steal. I won't murder. I won't do wrong. I love everybody. Like the Bible said, I am to love everybody. You can't do that. If you have not accepted him as your savior 
Lord and Savior. Now watch this. As I said earlier, we point fingers at our governments. We point fingers at a group of people not realizing that we ourselves are empty. Listen, stop pointing your fingers at others. Stop, stop making others to blame. Stop saying the government is to blame. The society is to blame. My job is to blame. My mom and daddy divorced when I was young and they broke up or, or I never knew my daddy or I never knew my mama or I went to, uh, 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 they put me, uh, you know, gave me away and I had to go where they keep the children and all of I don't care. We cannot make this final excuse. You have a right to make a choice when you grow up that, listen, you got a chance to accept God as your personal Savior. Regardless, all of us have been through some things in our life that have not been good, that have not been the best. All of us have had great parents and good parents that done everything right and done it before us. No, we, we've gone through some things. We've had some pains. We, we've had some aches. We, we've been through some stuff. We saw some things that we should not have saw, been involved in some some stuff that we should not have been involved with. But in the midst of all of that, now I have a right to make a decision. So regardless of what my daddy has done, he was not in my life, or my daddy whooped my mama, or my mama, mama whooped my daddy. Regardless of what the cases may be, you have a choice now. You can choose God as your father. And he can change whatever your past was. God can change it and give you a greater future. You don't have to stay in your past. Look at someone and say, you don't have to stay in your past. You can have a better future. You can have a better life now. And you can have eternal life when it's all over if you make God your choice. Now, there's only really one thing remaining. There's really only one thing left. As I get ready to come to a close as a nation and a people, we need to repent. Just simply say we need to repent. John the Baptist said he's the voice of one crying in the wilderness saying, come to the Lord. Repent and be baptized for the remission of your sin. That same message that John preached over thousands of years ago is the same message right now. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. If we want our nation to be exalted and exalted is in as watch this now as I slow it down just a little bit it the righteousness of a nation what it will do it will make it where the laws that are governing they'll govern the right, right way they'll be equal to all of us we don't have to do all this protesting and wa walking on the steps of Washington DC and going to Sacramento and all these kind of places going to your state capital if listen if the righteousness of the people was right Huh, thank you, God. We wouldn't have to worry about marching on no one steps and doing things differently. We would be able to stay in our homes and where we are, and everybody would be making the right choice and the best decision. We can only do that after we repent, after we return to God, after we become a righteous people. We can only do that. Now, I'm going to conclude with, with Isaiah. 58 chapter, and I close with this because this is my responsibility as a, as a man of God, as a disciple of God, as a messenger of God. You can just write it down, Isaiah 58 and 1. He said, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins. My responsibility as the preacher and the man of God is to declare the righteousness of God. Be instant in season and be instant out of season. Tell you the truth when you don't want to hear it. Tell you the truth when you think you want to hear it. Whether you want to or not, my responsibility is to give you the word of God as I've given you on today and, and try to declare unto you and help you come to a mindset of making a righteous decision and even if if you want righteousness in your life, you want righteousness in your community, you want righteousness around you. If you choose righteousness, it will uplift you and even those that are around you. So he told me to cry loud. In other words, don't just mumble the word. Don't just be soft about it, but do it with a decoration. Do it with a mindset. I'm crying unto you, the people and the non-people of God. I'm lifting up my voice like a trumpet, showing them their transgression. In other words, you are in sin and you need to come out. If you want God to bless your surrounding, you want God to change your environment, it can be changed if you choose the word of God. And the purpose of that, God said, I'm crying out to you. God said, I'm declaring unto you. God said, I'm trying to make a declaration. I'm trying to bring you back. I'm calling you in. I'm calling you 
by your name, wherever you are, whatever you in, whatever place that you kind of did. God said, I'm calling you. And in that calling you, uh, God will change uh, your life. Listen, in Isaiah 28 and 20, it said, for the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on and the covering is narrower than he can wrap himself in it. In other words, God is saying sin is so bad that you pull, you try to, you don't have enough of cover to cover sin. If you cover your head, your feet are sticking out. If you cover your feet, your head is sticking out. You don't have enough to wrap yourself in because that's what sin does. It destroys and it take away. So I close with this on today. Make the right choice. Make God your choice. If you want things better in you, if you want things better around you, make God your choice. This is, a, this is just not a message to the church. This is a message to the world all over that if we want our nation to be exalted, it, it would, it would, righteousness would demand everyone being treated right. We would have to fight for our rights if there was righteousness. Righteousness would demand righteousness. It would demand equality. We wouldn't have to ask for the right thing to be done. It would be done. So from the White House to the Outer House, God has made a declaration says righteousness exalts us and sin brings us down. We're going to be destroyed if we don't accept the word like it says. God, we thank you now again for your word. Righteousness exalts us and sin brings us down. I pray for the condition of our world that we live in. Pray for the condition of men's hearts and minds. You said the God of this world have blinded the mind of men that they can't see you. So I pray for the mind of men and women, girls and boys all over our world, that you would talk to them, God, that you would break the barrier, pull down the wall that's holding them out, give them a change of heart and mind. You're such a great and loving God that you don't you don't, you don't throw yourself. You don't make anyone do anything. You give them a choice. God, you gave us a choice. You're giving us a choice. And you're saying, choose me this day that you may have life. So I pray for those ones who are unsaved on today that they would come unto you, unto salvation. I pray for those who are saved, that they would hold on and they would be a light to a sin darkened world giving men, women, girls, and boys an opportunity to see Jesus in their life, that they may declare, what shall I do that I may be saved? I pray for every sickness, every illness, every disease, every affliction in our world on today. I pray for them. You said, Lord, by your stripes we are healed. I pray that you do it even now in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. It's in Jesus' name, amen. It is now often time you have an opportunity that you can be a blessing to this church, to this ministry. Uh, you are now able to uh, give directly to Glory Bound through Cash App. Yes, you can go to your Cash App, put our our name in it, a dollar sign Glory Bound MBC, and you can send Cash App to Glory Bound. You can also do Zelle. Yes, you can also do Zelle using the church phone number 310-639-7364. Are going to uh, our email, which is glory, G L O G L O R Y 9187 at att.net. Glory, G L O R Y, amen. 9187 at, at att.net. You can give through Zelle and through Cash App. We thank you for your contributions. We thank you for your giving. Continue to pray for us, and I'm going to pray for you. Remember, I pray for you and you pray for me. And what's going to happen together, we're going to watch God change things. God bless you and keep you to the next time.